the Salt Sundance and some of his scenes since, but we just love it. Uh, we had the director, Jim Strauss's previous film, uh, People Places Things here a couple of years ago, which we, we love so much. Um, and we just, before we start the movie, let's bring, let's bring Jim Strauss out to say a few words about this movie. Hi, thanks, thanks a lot for coming on a Wednesday night. I am really excited to be here. I love this festival. It's such, it's such a well-programmed, beautiful festival. Um, I love Chicago. I grew up two hours away from here. Uh, I got a chance to go to Quimby's Comics today. Anyone know <laughs> Quimby's? Any fans of Quimby's? <laughs> and the T-shirt deli, which I'd never heard of, but has anyone, er, er, anyone know the T-shirt deli? It's amazing. Uh, t-shirt shop so uh, they said they'd give me five dollars if I said that and uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoy it I'll be here to talk about the movie with Noel and uh, um, I hope you enjoy it thanks writer star of this film, uh, Noel Wells. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a I didn't write this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Oh, I uh, got my credits entirely confused, which... We all dabble. We all... <laughs> I tried to write more. Well, you're both, uh, I mean, you're both writer-directors, you're both filmmakers, um, and we're, we're going to kind of talk about that relationship in a second, but I have to skip straight ahead to the opening dance sequence. I really want to know what that was like to direct, like how, how that came together. The, the opening sequence over the credits where she's oh, just yeah, kind of dancing you're, a hard yeah. time. You gave me a look like, do you remember it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at me. I, I, like, then I'm, then I'm wondering, I was wondering, what, do I look so blank? That <laughs> I'm a little under the weather, so maybe I do. Uh, I love that. Uh, the filming of that dance sequence was really fun, and it was actually professionally choreographed. Um, a, a friend of mine, um, Celia Ralston Hall, who's a really great filmmaker, um, uh, and choreographer helped us chore choreograph it, and uh, you know it was scripted to be something like a credit sequence, uh, a cross between a professional credit sequence and someone just dancing in their apartment. I wanted it to feel kind of low key, <laughs> like uh, so. Um, it was really it was really fun because uh, you know if Jessica at parts of it she's like does this. Is this, does it look good? And it's like, yeah, whatever it looks like is great for, because it's real. And she, you know, she was, uh, you know, I remember she was a little disappointed with some of the jumps on the roof. She's like, I felt like I was going much higher. Uh, uh, but it was with a steady cam and a choreographer. Um, it was actually really fun because I kind of got to stand back and uh, watch. The choreographer worked with the steady cam operator and just sort of uh, chime in here and there, but it was um, the, the movement of it all was really uh, um, Jessica working with the choreographer and then the choreographer in um, conversation with the uh, um, DP who is, you know, has to dance along with her. Uh, it was really, it, the, the only downside of it was that it, it wasn't in it. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the downside, and the fact that it was uh, all the, it was the last thing we filmed, and you know it was always so, and it was at night, so you know we begin at midnight and go till you can imagine how Jessica might be like at 5 a.m. after all night dancing, like <laughs> not the happiest, not the, and you kind of kind of had to keep that energy up. Uh, how did you keep your energy up, Noel? Like your your character's so effervescent. There's so much energy to that character. Oh, I, was there a lot of shooting at, at midnight? After no, not for me. I had a pretty breezy time. I was I was there for a long time. I was in New York uh, almost through the whole shoot. It felt like, and but I just would sh shoot like one day and then have like a couple days to like wander around New York. So I kept my energy up by not working very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's good work if you can get it. Well, let's talk a little about uh, how it came together. How, how did... <laughs> 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 well, 
We're just going to accumulate mics up here, like as many as possible. Um, I mean, I understand that uh, your producers on the film uh, brought Noel, brought you and Noel together. How, like, how did that happen? Well, I was trying to get in touch with her, um, and um, I think I wrote I wrote you a letter, and uh, um, you just wouldn't get back to me ever. And is luck that true? Kind of. Is but, that true? Uh, but then our oh, producer, I'm in, really bad in, at emails. In common, uh, I helped I think link us oh. up. I will just say it. I, I was I was trying to be funny. I, I'm not trying no, to No, it just makes me, it just reminds me I have so many emails that I have not responded to. <laughs> so I'm now feeling My mom bad. says it's the same thing. <laughs> Movie stars, they're just like us. Um, <laughs> I, I've actually heard, I've read other interviews where you talk about the, like, the impassioned letters that you send to actors when you want to work with them. That's how um, Chris O'Dowd got involved in this film too, isn't it? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. I, I find uh, as a um, my experience is uh, making films like this. Uh, it's a um, we're we're not offering anyone a lot of money, um, so I people got paid. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta hope you gotta appeal to pe people in other ways. So I, I there hasn't been a single project I've ever been involved. In. With uh, I d haven't written directly to the actors, and I'm lucky to get to work with um, you, you know everyone in this movie, everyone in um, the last movie, people, places, things were people that I like really wanted. Mm -hmm. So um, that's part of it, kind of like trying to articulate that and put it into words because I'm a stranger and there's so many projects out there. Um, so I, I believe wholeheartedly in writing letters to um, actors. I just searched my email and I, I, I do not have any, I had an email from you saying thank you for doing the movie. It would have been, it would have been through your agent. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love that we're having this drama play out like live here. This is really exciting. Or You're maybe really through Michael, the producer. Oh. Yeah, I don't respond to his email. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I respond to as many emails. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you, you tattled on her, and now like she's trying to show you up. Why? He, we did have a phone conversation. It was really nice, and I had never had anybody asking me if I would do if I. I've always only begged for jobs, so it was really nice to be on the other end of a phone conversation where somebody was asking me to do something. And you know her from Saturday Night Live, right? Nobody knows me personally. <laughs> well, I, thought, I thought you said that beforehand. Yeah, yeah. How, how no, did I, you? Yeah. Aww. I am a master of none. I'm just yeah. a fan. Yeah. Oh. I was a fan, and you never know what... I, I really uh, loved working with Noel, and like, ev you never know how anyone's going to be. You know, I, I, every actor is so different, but what I love so much... I, that phone call was pretty short. Uh, I remember... Uh, I, I just, what came through right away was just like this um, confidence and like I, you know, I was talking about what I like and what I was looking for and, and my memory of it was like, yeah, I can do that. I can do lots of things. I'm a good actress. Uh, <laughs> and it was true. It was true on set too. It's kind of like, oh, you want any sort of idea? I was like, okay, I can do that. That's actually one of the things that fascinates me most about this film is, is Jessica Jones' confidence. Like, we see so many indie movies, and I feel like uh, Bridget Jones' Diary just kicked off this endless wave of books and films about women who have no confidence in themselves, who are constantly questioning themselves. And then we have this movie that's basically about two women uh, who do never question themselves. Like, maybe Jessica questions her profession, but she never questions her inherent worth. Why was that an important story note for you? Well, uh, I was th I'm honestly, when writing it, I was thinking a lot. I was thinking about two things. I was thinking about um, Jessica Williams, who I'd worked with before, and I kind of was writing it for. I was creating this character kind of for this her energy uh, and you know, like w what would be fun to see her do in situations. Uh, to see her in, and also I was thinking about, I have a 12-year-old daughter, I was thinking about, and we watch 
rom-coms, we watch a lot of John Hughes movies. Um, and, you know, my goal for writing this and sort of the end of it all was kind of like, well, it's a romantic comedy, but who cares about the man? Who cares about the guy, the romance? It's like, and that's why, I mean, one of the central characters is kind of just in her head. Um, uh, yeah, I just, I, 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 it was, I wanted to create this character that my, you know, in a couple of years, my daughter could watch this movie and sort of, you know, a, a, a role model of sorts, but, but not at all like, but still incredibly flawed and um, fragile like everyone. I mean, it feels a little bit like we're dealing with a, like a standard romantic comedy with some of the genders flipped and some of the races flipped. I mean, Noel's you're, Noel's, you're basically playing a character that we've seen over and over, which is you know the, the black best friend uh, who is there to support the main character, except you, uh, you know, you flip those colors. Um, it feels like Chris O'Dowd is kind of the, like, the woman that's trying to pull herself together that we see over and over in standard romantic comedies. Did that, did that occur to you, that mechanic? Yeah, I mean, it was, it, it, I was thinking about that. I mean, I, it was funny, there's a, there's a scene um, where Chris is trying to put, Chris's character is trying to put the brakes on everything. And in shooting that scene, it was funny because, uh, Jessica kind of didn't want to be aggressive. She's like, well, maybe he should be coming more at me. And I'm like, no, he, uh, you're, you're, uh, uh, that's not what this moment's about. It's like, you, you know what you want. And uh, I, I liked how flipped it was, that situation. And, and it was funny just kind of working out the dynamics with the two of them because um, Jessica actually didn't want to do that. She's like, uh, I don't want to, I, it's too aggressive, it's not my style. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it in Jessica, when you, she was in uh, your 2015 movie, People, Places, Things, what was it about her that made you want to, to create this movie? Like, was it created just specifically because you had worked with her and you wanted to, to do a starring role with her? Yeah, I just, you know, I really liked, I really liked her. I always liked her from The Daily Show and, uh, um, and when I was editing People, Places, Things, it was just, um, there was, it was, there was something about her in the editing room and kind of just watching her on screen, I thought that it would be great to see a film where she's in every scene. Um, and that kind of really just started it. Um, um, and you, you know, I, jo I joked with her about how, um, I can't wait till someone writes a movie just for you, and then uh, I kind of just decide I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> There's that one shot of her in the airport on the People Mover where you're following her with a camera. Is that a is that a Jackie Brown movement moment? Is it The Graduate, which Jackie Brown was? I you know I, I mean I was aware of both of those sequences and yeah Graduate. Um, I. I I looked at both sequences uh, before shooting it. You know, it's funny, that's the first thing we filmed and it was at a mall on Staten Island. Uh, and she's on a cart. And, <laughs> and we just liked that wall. And I, in the editing room, I thought, oh, are people gonna buy this? This is like, you can see Dunkin' Donuts. Or like, not, I mean, I guess they're Dunkin' Donuts in the airports, but it's a mall, it's like a huge mall. Um, but it worked. It's funny, funny all this. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's movie magic. Yeah. What else is what else is going on in the movie that like that just off screen that if we, we knew about would be surprised? When she's when she's talking to uh, Damon out the window, I actually I kept wondering like is that actually a, the second story or like if he is he like three inches above the ground? <laughs> like what, what what would what would we want to know about what's off screen besides the uh, the mall incident? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. He was. We were on the. You know that sequence. Uh, of all the sequences in the movie, I, I kept getting told by the AD, I think you're gonna have to reconceive that because we're not gonna, this is gonna be too hard to film. And we're not gonna find something that feels like a ledge, but that's like at a safe height. But we found a place that was uh, first, maybe the second floor, and there was, we put scaffolding below the uh, window and there was, um, it, it was a little rickety, but uh, but Keith felt safe enough to do it. And, um, 
I'm, I can't think of any off screen. I'd like to. Well, we were, we were shooting that, that last uh, scene. We were in half a pl airplane that was flying through the air. <laughs> so dumb. We were, we were in the air shooting, but the airplane was cut in half so the camera could see. And then we had to have the screens to block out the wind. That was, that was intense. This really bombed. <laughs> that was so bad. Don't, don't say bombed when you're talking about airlines. They get, Fair they get really, really touchy Fair about enough. it. Okay, so you, you don't seem to have dug up that email. What, what was it that did convince you to be in this film? Like, what, I, what about it? Well, I just shot my movie, mm -hmm. and we, I had been talking about doing this film, um, but knew at the time that I was going to be starring in an, my, own, my own movie. And to me, I like the idea of being able, like, I'm, I don't always want to star in films, I want to collaborate with people, and I really wanted to work with Jessica, and I liked that the roles were flipped. I liked being the best friend character, and um, I liked being that support. Yeah. You know, one thing that is, I don't think I ever told you, and I would, there's a moment, I, I had an idea, and it, um, the scene actually got cut, um, but I, 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 I thought about addressing that idea of her as a friend, because it bothers me sometimes when friends are kind of feel like they're merely there to support the protagonist in their journey. And I thought, wouldn't it be funny if the like, camera drifted to you and you're like, what, me? Uh, and then you and you tell your like life story, uh, and then we like drift back to Jessica. Stage name is Tasha. Yeah, We're, like Real we hear everything Lenora. about Lenora. Yeah, but I I didn't uh, we couldn't film it. But the good thing is, is she's not. I didn't feel. I didn't read it and be like, oh, she's two dimensional, and I'm just there supporting it. Like I didn't find that to be the case when I when I read the script. Otherwise, I wouldn't have agreed to do it. And um, I liked. I like that she was supporting, but felt like a genuine friend. And we would, me and Jessica would joke on set after we would do a take. We'd be like, "Chemistry, we have chemistry." Oh, we know we have history. We said we were like, "We have history," because it's like they felt like friends. And I imagine a world that they are genuinely friends, and it wasn't like a, a friendship of convenience just to support her when she was having boy problems. When they're on the bed talking about, um, when they're in the bed after the club, some of my favorite material to look through was that um, just them talking I mean they you guys really went off script in some ways and you know and honestly felt like two friends in bed talking late at night uh, which it was it was it was, late at night. It was very late and uh, it, you know it's fun it's fun to when you can kind of grab that real stuff that happens and put it in there amongst the other scripted things for both of you, what was your favorite ad lib that made it into the film? Well, I'm going to be honest, I didn't, I haven't watched it for a while. I didn't get to watch the screening, but I don't know. I feel like I did, I, I surprised myself. I really love it when she like starts slapping. It was like, you spent the night with him? Oh, yeah, and you're like, <laughs> uh, like that moment, that's like one of those moments that just feels like really uh, genuine. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I like, um, I'm gonna stick with this basic peen. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. We're going to um, start taking audience questions. If you guys have uh, questions for these guys, there's a microphone right up here uh, where you can come line up. I've got a few more while you guys are making up your, getting your courage together um, and getting lined up. Um, but just in a moment, uh, we'll start going to that and I see some people coming down, which is exciting. Um, I just want to talk really briefly about how you use social media in this film. I mean, I, the whole idea of people following each other's exes in order to feel less pathetic, uh, but then getting really obsessed with it, it's just, it's such a great idea. Um, and I'm wondering, like I know you said that you write from your, from your life experience, was any of that like, from your actual thoughts on social media or your experience with social media? Obsessing over exes? Obsessing over exes, <laughs> finding coping, it, uh, coping mechanisms. I don't know if I find any coping from it, but I, it's a weird thing that I think kind of, uh, uh, it's weird. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, it, uh, you know, I, I like to think of this film as about, in, in some ways about how hard it is to get over someone and like what, when the relationship's over and the person is gone, but you're still like not done, mm 
Mm -hmm. and, and I think social media can kind of prolong that. Well, I, like, I like what you said about then following, like, I feel like when you break up with people or even have like friendships fall out, you don't want to unfollow somebody because you want to seem like you're bigger than that. But then there comes a point where you have, like, to take care of yourself, you have to unfollow them and then being okay with that. Or if you lose a job and you are following all these people that are working at this place and then you're like, well, do I keep following these people? Even though every time I see a picture, I'm like galvanized just to keep up appearances. But then it is nice if your friends are kind of keeping tabs and can send you something if you need to see it. One really interesting thing in the story uh, around that whole like sort of coming to terms with the process is all of the time we spend inside Jessica's head seeing her fantasies of, of dealing with Damon uh, and kind of seeing that progression. And I thought it was really interesting that we don't, it's a story about a writer, but we don't see a bunch of her like sweating over trying to write, which is something else indie movies do a lot. So, but instead we see these things that she is sort of writing for herself. What, sir, can you talk a little about sort of the dynamic about seeing what she's like as a creative person, but not spending a whole bunch of time on her writing? Well, to me, I always think, I, I've written a couple stories, screenplays about writers, and I think it's tricky. Uh, um, and ha having, you know, being a writer, writing so much, I, I kind of, my view of it's changed a little. It's like, there's what you do at, you know, at the laptop or at the typewriter or whatever, but then there's every, everything else is also part of being a writer. Uh, like every moment of life uh, is, is, is part of the process. And I thought in some way, like her, her you know, daydreams and imagination is uh, part of the work. It's part of, uh, it's, you know, her voice is coming through in some way in those sequences. They're, I, I imagine her work is funny and sort of autobiographical um, in some way, shape, or form. And, um, you know, that's what I wanted to come through in those uh, sequences with Damon. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Uh, is, is that Mike live? You want to step up and... I think so, yes. Um, that's a wonderful film. Thank you both for being here. I have to mention, at the Cannes Film Festival today, there was a big argument between Pedro Almodovar and Will Smith about the merits of Netflix and its role in releasing films. And we've had a number of great films, including this one with the Netflix logo. And I'd love to ask just for your perspective as a filmmaker, where, what do you think of as far as like the, the merits of Netflix for this film or just the, the limitations of it or the benefits of it? I'm just curious. I'm excited about it. I have to, I mean, I've been working I've been making independent films um, uh, for a while. This is uh, my fourth film as a director, and I've so I've and I've, I've I feel very fortunate that I've been able to work this long in the film industry and make the types of things that I want to make. But you know, th these types of stories uh, generally are passion projects. They're you know you you're gathering people and. Um, asking them to work for very little. And uh, I've had experiences with uh, distributors uh, in the past that were pretty, uh, it's, it, it's not that fun to kind of get through it all and then at the end of the day, like, the movie never really got, was visible. And that, that's not the, that doesn't feel like it's the case here with Netflix. I feel very, like, from the beginning, uh, they've been very hands-on with, you know, how they feel about the film, what they, internally, what they plan to do with it, and, uh, you know, I feel like this one is really um, going to have a have a have an audience that none of my others ha have. So, like, I don't know what Will Smith and Almodovar said, but I just I, I think that the world is. I mean, for my part of it, it's like the. The world can contain it all. Like Netflix will continue to evolve, cinema will not die, um, you know, TV will continue to be great, and like everything will move forward. And it's not like one thing or the other. Oh, I'll be watching it again. So thanks. Thank you. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, very funny movie. Uh, also, my sister's named Tasha, so uh, it was weird <laughs> to see you uh, play with Fiverr so much. Um, so, um, a question 
uh, for Jim, the I really love people, places, things, and I feel like the humor in this one was a little more fast-paced, and I was wondering if that had anything to do with the main character being younger. Definitely, yeah. I mean, we were. T I remember talking with Jessica about music in it, and she's like, "You're not gonna. We're not gonna use that." Composer from People, Places, Things, are you? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a quick, the pace of it all, it, it moves quicker. Yeah, and I, I mean, I wanted it all to reflect her, and she's, you know, um, thank you for watching People, Places, Things. Oh, yeah, well, that's great. Jemaine Clement is very, like, inward and kind of semi depressed, and, you know, he's, like, in his head, and this was just a different. Um, and I wanted it to. Re I wanted the film to kind of re the editing music to reflect sort of her energy. Great. Thank I'll you. get back to sad people though. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of my wheelhouse. Speaking of music, I just have to ask the the speed metal thing at the baby shower. It was hilarious. Where did that Where did that idea come from? Where did that music go? Did you Are you a secret speed metal fan? I just I'm not, I don't like speed metal, but I just from I it was, just always in my head, like we, a baby shower set to speed metal. I just, it just made sense. I don't know. And um, and when I, the editor found a speed metal song, and you know, I was watching the first cut, and the first, the assembly is always kind of like you're moving its worst form. So you know, you, commonly directors will say they don't enjoy watching the assembly. Um, and I, I don't think I enjoyed it watching this one, um, but when I saw that sequence, I just like couldn't stop laughing. I loved it so much. And then it didn't. Not everyone did. It was all, you know, it was on. Uh, you know, we had test screenings and stuff with friends, and some people were like, "Yeah, it's it's, it's too. It's it's like it's a real bold choice. So it's like if you don't like it, then." You really don't like it, but I'm. But it always made me laugh, and uh, luckily, it made uh, Michael Clark laugh, and the um, you know the people I was making it with, so it stayed in. Hi, uh, great job, both of you. Um, question for Jim: um, In several of your films, uh, you've worked with lots of uh, younger children. Um, I was just wondering, like, um, how would you like to describe those experiences and? What have you found like the best ways of getting out the best performances on children that young? Yeah, I love kids. I mean, I actually my first film was I made here in Chicago um, with John Cusack and um, the kids, and it was it was him and two kids, like a 12 year old and an eight year old Chicago kids, um, and that was my first foray and that was my first experience with directing um, <laughs> directing that film, uh, and I I. I felt uneasy with the adults, but I always felt comfortable with the kids. Uh, and I just feel like, and I, you know, I, I'm a father myself, and I feel like kids just naturally kind of can tap into what you need to, to, that imaginative play is not weird for a kid. Uh, so, it's kind of, um, I, I feel like most kids can act. Uh, if they can just kind of get around the, the weirdness of set and the lights and stuff, like that, like kids know how to perform and pretend. Uh, and you just, my experience is kind of try to make them as comfortable as possible. I always tell them there's, you're, it, you're right for this. So nothing you do, don't worry about like you. Nothing you do is going to be wrong. Um, and even and that's not true. <laughs> but. But, That's what you told me too. But, no. <laughs> but uh, you, you know, you want to create that sense of like, I'm not, I'm not going to fail. I can't fail. I can, you know, and you know, kids are great. But though. they do fail. The children fail. They, 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 they fail, fail you. <laughs> the, the, the day runs long. And <laughs> are you feeling a little competition from the kids yeah. here? Yeah. <laughs> Talking about how natural they are and how in the moment and just know how to do it. <laughs> Next up. How are you? I, I thought the movie was great. Um, two of my favorite productions from the past year or so, Get Out in Atlanta, both of which had Keith Stanfield in there, so I was excited to see that he was in the movie. 
Um, can you just talk about working with him and what you think is like prospects for the future, potentially as a leading man might be, and things of that nature? I love him. I, you know, I, I, I won't, I, he was another person I wrote a, a letter to, and I, I really... I got that one. <laughs> that was the one I got. <laughs> That's weird. That was very weird. Now it's all coming together. <laughs> but I, I, I think he, uh, so at the time of this, when t the time we were making this, I'd seen Short Term 12, which he's amazing in. Uh, it's just, he's incredible in that. And then I, I knew he was in Atlanta, and I thought, well, that's, that's Donald Glover, and that's comedic. Uh, and I'd seen him in a couple other things, but I thought, uh, I just thought it was interesting that he was gonna be in a comedic show and he was such a powerhouse in Short Term 12. Um, and I, I mean, I think his range is pretty incredible. Uh, he can, uh, he, I, he seems, I mean, I only got to work with him three days uh, on, on the film, but. Will you write a movie for him like you did for us? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I think I promised everyone I would, that's in this movie. I that have I, not I gotten would... that promise. No. <laughs> I... But I'll take it. <laughs> we're, uh, we're getting a signal that we're going to need to wrap up soon. So, uh... Maybe two quick ones. Yeah, one make, it, one. make it super quick. <laughs> <laughs> Talk fast. Um, this question's for both of you guys. Um, obviously, Jessica was 25 or so in the movie. Um, and this movie made it to Sundance, then it's Saturday Night Live. You've heard four movies. What were you doing when you were 25? And what do you think 25 year old you would have thought of this? Um. I was 25, I was editing uh, web videos for multiple websites like cracked.com and College Humor and I was very miserable and sad. <laughs> um, I could barely eat, <laughs> uh, but I was on a UCB sketch team and I was also at the same time working on some of my own things and I, you know, that wasn't very long ago for me. It, I guess it was five years ago, but um, I would think I'd be very happy. I, I'm really, it's really cool that I've been able to get this far and get to be here in this beautiful theater and get to talk to you and answer questions and I get to do the things I've always dreamed that I would get to do. I think my, I, at 25 I was um, working at the Magnolia Bakery in, uh, in Manhattan and uh, I mean, I kind of made this movie for my 25-year-old self. Like, it's a reflection of, I was, right, I was, I really wanted to write short stories and like, I was, um, be a fiction writer, and I was just getting rejections. Kind of like, like that wall of rejection is something out of my own life. Kind of just little journals all over the place, just rejection after rejection after rejection. Um, so maybe, I think, I, maybe my action, the honest answer is maybe I'd be angry about this movie watching it <laughs> at 25 because I was kind of disgruntled. But um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the honest answer. I will say I also was doing a bunch of, I was going on tons of auditions and I had a, a jar. This, it was like this tall and every audition I ever went to, I would write it on a really small piece of paper this big and fold it up and put it in the jar and that was like my piggy bank. And by the time I got on SNL, it was like three quarters of the way filled, just hundreds of auditions. I didn't book anything, and SNL was the first thing I ever booked. So. I, mean, reje I just think it's <laughs> rejection and failure is such yeah. a big part of like success. Yeah, and then I, try I tried to be really, I thought it was fun. To, I'd be like, look, this is how much, how much I've been rejected, and this is, but it's a, it's a cool way to see it, especially if it was fun. It's like, I write it down, like fold it up, put it in there, and be like, <laughs> another rejection. Do you, do you still have that jar? I do, I have that jar. I, I, I imagine that one day I would like take them all out and just take a picture of every single one of those paper, pieces of paper so people will know. It was hun like hundreds of things that I had been doing. Hundreds. Wow, that is amazing. Uh, last question. Hi, thank you for being here. Um, I was just curious what part Netflix played in the actual finished products. Um, it felt kind of similar to other things I've seen distributed or produced by Netflix. I don't know if that's just a coincidence. Um, I was just curious if you could speak to their influence on the project. Uh, it was an independent production and uh, picked up at Sundance by Netflix. So, um, cool. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 
I mean, what was that process like of being at Sundance? Like, were you, were you courted or did Netflix just walk in the door and throw a bag of money on the table and look at you? <laughs> that's, that, that's exactly that, how it happened. <laughs> You know, it's a... Uh, like snow, <laughs> and, like kicked in the door and We're snow is like furling it. That sweet Netflix rain coming down. I think the process is different for every project. I mean, I've been involved in... I rem in my, my first film, the John Cusack one, is called Grace is Gone. Uh, that was... Oh, thanks. Uh, that had... Harvey Weinstein was like pounding down the door, uh, saying like, if you don't take this deal, we're going to... You know, you, there's not going to be a deal for you to take any, in, in like five minutes, and that they can be really dramatic. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, that that wasn't the case here. There was a couple interested parties, and we talked to all of them, and um, you know, Netflix was the most uh, exciting. Hmm. Well, the film uh, I understand is coming to Netflix on June 28th. Um, uh, July 28th. Oh, July 28th. Oh, they, said, they just said the 28th and they assumed I'd know. Uh, so, you know, a, a lot of times you come to film festivals and you see movies that you like and you want to tell your friends and it's like, if it gets picked up, you might see it two years from now. Here you have the opportunity to tell people about uh, a film that they're going to be able to actually see soon, like in their own homes. So we, we hope you share that with people and we hope that you remember the film and watch it 27 more times on Netflix and reward the, the money that Netflix put into acquiring it. <laughs> but uh, for the moment, we've got to wrap up, um, but I understand that uh, you guys are gonna go hang out in the cafe if people wanna go tell them how awesome they are, um, you know, wave their, their book of screenplays, the stick in their faces and try to get you to make their films. Um, I believe the Naked Juice people are still there, so like, have some juice, come talk to the filmmakers. Uh, do not have juice naked, that's a different thing, and you shouldn't do that in the cafe. Uh, and then Mr. Roosevelt will be coming up, and Noelle will be back to talk about that one, which I believe she did write. Yes, I did write that one. Well, I wrote that one. Jim wrote it. He wrote the email to get <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you guys.